Welcome to another video where I document my learning about the Cohesity Data Management Platform. My name is Alistair Cook and in this video I will be taking a look at using the Cohesity Data Management Platform to protect physical servers, like the one that you see in front of you right now. This is an Intel NUC with Windows Server 2019 installed in it, so it's a physical machine, not my usual virtual machines or my usual Mac. But it is my usual Cohesity cluster that's sitting here and is protecting a bunch of virtual machines and some shares and those kinds of things. First thing we want to do is, as always, take a look at the user guide. So I have here a copy of the user guide for the version of the Cohesity data management platform that I'm using. And we particularly want to take a look in the protection section at protecting physical servers. There we go. And in here it talks about the two different kinds of protection that you can do, either volume level protection or file level protection. We'll install things so we can do both. There's some notes in here about silently installing the Windows agent as well as using that to protect Microsoft SQL. I did the silent install in my last video where I looked at using Ansible to set up the agent on some Linux machines as well as then registering them as sources and creating a protection policy and protection job to run with them. This time I'm going to be doing everything manually and so I'll start by installing the Cohesity agent on my Windows server and we do that by downloading it out of the actual console. So if I pop back into the console and I go to Data Protection and Sources. There's a link here to download the Cohesity agent and I will just download that Windows agent. Nice quick download, it's not hugely large and I can just run the executable. The installer says, are you sure you want to do this? Shouldn't run anything else at the same time. Normal kind of installer warnings. It says, do you want the volume level or the file system level data protection? You know, I think I want file system level. I would like the ability to protect Microsoft SQL as well that's installed on this machine should that ever occur. I'm going to run it under the local system account and we're just going to then go ahead and do this install. Once everything's installed, it says, yes, I would like to have a restart. Due to the magic of video editing, you don't need to wait for that restart. And now that the system is back, we can take a look and we can see that the Cohesity Agent install is here. And we can see in the services control panel that there is a Cohesity Agent service that is auto starting and running now. So we've got a running Cohesity Agent service. The other thing we do need to do is open up the firewall. Now I have the firewall running here, the Windows Defender firewall is running on this machine and I need to explicitly allow the Cohesity agent to accept incoming connections. So I just add that, we specify that it's allowed on the domain and all is good in there. Can pop back into sources and add then a physical server. Specify the IP address of my physical server, which is me. Register that, and very quickly it turns up, and you can see that the status is showing registering. So it's going out and discovering what resources, uh, what capacity there is to protect, and how it can be protected by the agent running on this machine. In a moment or two, that registration will complete out, and it will show us how much capacity there is to protect in here. While it's doing that registration, we'll go in and create a protection job. So what we should be able to do is create a physical file server. Let's do a file-based physical server backup. And this is going to be called physical file. And then the source is going to be our physical servers. And we have the one physical server backup the entire C drive. It's the only drive it has. Add that in, choose the backup policy, let's go with a silver backup policy, use the default storage domain, and hit protect on that. That physical file protection job should start very shortly. If I pop back into the sources, we could see that there was already information here about my Windows machine that had been registered. In the previous video, I used Ansible to deploy the agent to some Linux boxes. What I'm going to do now is to download that Linux agent and deploy it to one of those boxes. So I'm going to download the agent in Debian format as a deb package because I have a Ubuntu machine that I need to protect. So let's open up that folder containing the downloaded agent file. 
Uh, let's clean things up a little as well. Let's get rid of him. Let's have ourselves another Windows Explorer window and we will take a look at one of the other machines. 135. And there's the vbrown bag users home directory. I just copy across the dev package. Dev packages across. So now I don't need to worry about those windows. What I should do though is take a look at the user guide and see what the instructions are for installing this agent on a Linux machine. So we go physical server backup pop down past the instructions for Windows machines and take a look at the instructions. So this is the command line I need here and I need to run it as a root user. So I'll just copy that text, connect up to the Linux box that I've just copied the files to, log on as my low privilege user Make sure that my agent is there. Elevate my privileges, change back into my home directory, and then run the RPM command to install the agent. That's not an RPM, I should be running the Deb. <laughs> I was saying I was looking for the Debian package, and there's the Debian package. There we go. Let's try that. That's installed the Cohesity agent. Excellent. Now, the agent is there. I don't need to start the service with a different user ID. It goes in the default location. All right, that should all be good. So let's pop back into our Cohesity console and see if I can add now as a source that Linux box. So register a physical server. This time I'm going to get 135. And there it is. We can see immediately that it's a Linux box. We can see that it's got some data on it and we could add it to our protection job. Let's see how that protection job is going. It'll take a while to complete. It is the first protection job for this particular box. So it'll be doing a full scan and a full copy. So if we take a look at the actual job, take a look at this run of the job, and what we'll see in here is that it's analyzing 14,000 files. It's going to take a little while to complete this backup. Once again, magic of editing, you don't need to watch that. Well, now my initial backup has completed. It took just over an hour and a half to move five and a half gigabytes of data out of an 11 gigabyte logical. How large is my actual file system on this machine that we just backed up? Yeah, 22 gigabytes of used space. Uh, a big chunk of that will be the page file because uh, this machine's got 16 gigs of RAM, so I'll have a reasonable size page file. Looks like we're good to go. Let us get rid of our copy of the user guide and make sure that we can restore it from a backup. Let me delete it. There it is. Shift delete. Yes, I want to permanently delete. All right, now it's gone. So now we should be able to do a recovery. We should be able to recover a file. Let's go with browse by path. Need a protection job. There's my physical server. We'll go through him. So we'll browse through into C drive, into temp, and there's our user guide. We want to add that to the cart and save and continue. Uh, so we want to recover to the original location and overwrite. Going back to Windows, preserve attributes, recover files. Right, recovery shouldn't take terribly long, I would imagine. Let's go to recovery. Current status is running. Eight seconds complete. Let's have a look at the status showing. And see if we've got a file back in. <laughs> look at that, we've already got a file back in here, despite the fact that it's still running. 
So yes, uh, behaves exactly as you'd expect. A nice simple search for recovery. The restore completed nice and fast. Uh, took 18 seconds to complete. All was good. So setting up protection for physical servers is just as simple as setting up protection for virtual machines. The primary difference is that we have to deploy an agent to back up the physical machine and then enroll that agent as a source for recoveries. We can't logically group a, a large collection together, although of course as you saw in the previous video we could use Ansible to work with a larger group and have them all added as one. As usual, nice easy functionality with the Cohesity Data Management Platform. Let me know if there's a particular feature of the platform that you'd like me to illustrate a little further or dig a little deeper into. Always looking for new ideas of things to show. And stay tuned for more videos and blog posts around using KCD Data Management Platform. I'm Alistair Cook. Have a great day.